Verily Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned in the Quran that verily those who are the losers, those losers who have lost themselves and their families on that day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that losing as a huge loss. A huge loss. And we want to elaborate upon what Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned regarding the khasirun, the losers. Imam Baghawi rahimullah ta'ala, he says, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he says, Qeel al Qusran al Nafs bid the khul al Nar. That is losing and being amongst the losers and losing himself, the khul al Nar. Imam Baghawi says, that he will enter into the hellfire him. And when it mentions regarding Khusran al Ahl losing his family, then they have says, Bain you farriku, Bainahu wa Baina Ahlihi. Losing them because he will be separated. The person that is destined for the hellfire, that person that will be in the hellfire due to his disbelief or due to his sins. And if he has family members that are upon the obedience of Allah Azawajal, then they will be separated on that great day. This is how he loses himself and he loses his family. And remember, the hereafter is not like here. If we lose one of our family members for a short period, look at our state. If your wife don't come home, Look how you are. If your husband don't come home, how will you be? If you are separated from your children, how will you be? So what about Yawm al Qiyamah? So it's upon us to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in a manner that is pleasing to Him. And we strive hard. And from that love that we have and care for one another, is that we encourage each other with good because that will be khusran as well. The separating of families on that day. So the ulama they say, All of this khasara, losing, what Allah mentions in the Quran, that they have lost, they are amongst the losers. It refers to their deen. It refers to their religion. وَالْخَاسِرُونَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ هُمْ مَنْ خَسِرُوا آخِرَتُهُمْ That the ones that Allah has mentioned amongst the losers, they are the ones that have lost their akhirah. That is our ultimate goal. If that has gone and we are not successful with the akhirah, then we are doomed. Because of this, our father, our mother were the first ones to recognize not to be amongst the losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that they said, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَتَقُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And when they fell into that error and they turned to Allah in dua, Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us, and you do not have mercy, then indeed we will be amongst the losers. As far as it goes back to that time, mention of the losers. So then we say, وَمَعْرِفَةُ أَسْبَابِ الْخَسَارَةِ وَأَعْمَالِ الْخَاسِرِينَ سَبَبٌ لِإِجْتِنَابِهَا so we say that having knowledge of those things that will bring about this khasara, losing yourself in this life and the hereafter, knowing what actions causes you to be amongst the losers, is imperative that we have this knowledge. Why? In order to stay away from it. In order for us to have salvation from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qad bayyana lana fi kitab al-aziz kulla tariqin yu'addi ila al-khasarati 
وَيَجْعَلُ صَاحِبَهُ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Our Lord has made it clear in His manifest book, His magnificent book, Allah has made it clear. Everything, all the path that leads to destruction, that will make you amongst the losers, or will make you amongst those individuals that do the actions of the losers. So now, بِإِذْنِلَّهِ in this short khutbah, we will mention some of these things that we have to have hadhar and be aware of not to fall into it so we don't become amongst the losers. There are many, but a khutbah does not suffice it. But we will try to mention some of the most important ones. The first one is shirk wal kufr, ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denying your Lord that has created you. These are from the biggest asbab, the main reasons that will definitely make you amongst the losers. And we inspired to you, O Muhammad, and those before you, that if you was to ascribe partners, and Allah is addressing the messenger here, and he is free, free from shirk, but to show you the severity, even him, that if you was to ascribe any partners with Allah, it will nullify your deeds and make you amongst the losers. This is the nature of shirk and disbelief. And disbelief, as Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions, وَلَا تَقُونَنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ do not be from those who deny Allah, who deny Allah's verses, Allah's signs, deny what's come by way of this religion. Do not be from them, for indeed you will become from amongst the losers. So kufr and shirk is the first one. The next one, i'rab and dhikrillah turning away from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. قال الله عز wa Jal استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله that the shaytan has overpowered them that shaytan and his army from amongst jinn and mankind and any shaytan is the one that calls you away from the remembrance of Allah that is a shaytan the one that makes you fall into that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. That is a shaitan. So that shaitan that overpowers you, then it makes you forget the remembrance of Allah. It makes you forget what your rights are, or what shall I say, what you have to do regarding the rights of Allah azza wa jal. By praying, staying away from haram, fasting. And alhamdulillah, we're all aware of what Allah's hukuk is and the awamir that we have been commanded with. But this shaitan, he comes along with that lisan, that sweet tongue that makes that evil see, seem nice and good and you're easily falling into it. And then you forget the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah goes on to mention when that occurs, أُولَٰئِكَ حِزْبُ shaitan, They are the party of the shaitan. Verily, the party of the shaitan, they are the losers. Look how much Allah has mentioned that word, word khasirun, losers. Look how merciful Allah Azawajal is, what he has given us by way of tawjihat of the Quran. But how we forget the Quran and I address myself first. Quran, which is our shield and guidance, that one commodity that we have, which is the most expensive thing that we possess in this dunya. But we don't give it real value. We give other things more value. Allahu musta'an. The next one, ta'atu li'a'dai rabbil alameen. And this falls in line with this other one that we have just mentioned. That you're obedient to the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very obedient and it's ajib. That when you are commanded with good, it's hard on your chest to accept it. 
But when the enemies of Allah Azawajal bring something to you by way of sharr, how your heart leans towards it, how you just easily gone. May Allah keep us all firm. Listen to what Allah Azawajal has said regarding that. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tuti'u alladheena kafaru yaruddukum ala a'qabikum fatanqalibu al-khasirin. Allah Azawajal mentions in the Quran, those of you who believe, or you who believe, if you are obedient to those who disbelieve, those who do actions that are not pleasing to Allah, if you obey them and their things which they bring by way of temptation, if you fall victim to that, then you will fall back on your heels. You will fall back on your heels and you will become amongst the losers. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep us firm. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those that can withhold these temptations. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those who stand on the mimbar and address all of these Muslims to be from amongst the Muslimin and the Mukhlisin and Sadiqeen. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. And to continue regarding the points from those things that make a person fall into the category of the losers. Man qaddama dunyahu ala akhiratihi. The one that gives preference to this world over the hereafter. The one that is blinded in chasing all of what this dunya offers over the akhirah to the extent where he compromises his hereafter. قال الله عز وجل ذلك بأنه مستحب الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة Verily, they have preferred the life of this world over the hereafter وأن الله لا يحدي القوم الكافرين and either Allah Azza wa Jal will not guide a people who disbelieve. أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم وسمعهم وأبصارهم وأولئك هم الغافلون. Those that choose this world over the akhirah. And how do you choose? Let's elaborate how you choose. That you chase the dunya to the extent your soul trapped in this dunya you don't even care of the consequences of the akhirah this is when you choose where there are certain decisions you know that is affecting your akhirah you know your lord is not happy with that you know that it is not right but you do it because you want to be comfortable in this life or you want to enjoy in this life Remember, these are only flashing moments and there's a heavy price to pray, to pay in the Akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, the one that does this and is continuous on this, then Allah will put a seal on their hearts. He will put a seal on their hearing and their seeing and then they will become amongst the heedless. The evil result of choosing this life over the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes you of understanding. You no longer can see what is right. You can no longer hear what is right. Your hearts are gone because there is a seal. And then, then you are amongst the heedless ones. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, لا جرم أنهم في الآخرة هم الخاسرون There is no doubt that in the hereafter, they will be amongst the losers. La shak, no doubt. So we seek refuge in Allah from the trials of this dunya and the temptations of this dunya. And a lot of it is sometimes because we want to be comfortable. A lot of the times is because we want that security and then we bend rules to get that security. The security lies with Allah, the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even if you was afkar al nas fi dunya, even if you was the poorest person in the dunya, but you had Allah and you had ta'a and you had obedience, 
then you're strong and you're rich in the hereafter. That is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters. And the last one we will mention in this khutbah is, that the one is miserly, the one that is mingy in giving and doing good and giving in sadaqah from that which Allah Azawajal has given him. Listen to this tremendous hadith. وَأَنْ عَبِي ذَرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ قَالْ إِنْتَهَيْتُ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يقول في ذل الكعبة Abi Dhar, he says, I came towards the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was by the shade of the Kaaba and he saw me and then the messenger then صلى الله عليه وسلم he said هم الخاسرون رب الكعبة هم الخاسرون رب الكعبة هم الخاسرون رب الكعبة So Abu Dhar heard him say this three times They are the losers By the Lord of the Kaaba They are the losers And when Abu Dhar heard this And prior to that the messenger saw him You can see what came into his heart He feared that the messenger Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was talking about him and then he's then afterwards said, فَجَلَسْتُ إِلَيْ فَمَا اسْتَطَعْتُ أَنْ أَسْكُتْ I came closer to him and I could not remain quiet because the fear in my heart that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying, they are amongst the losers. They are amongst the losers and he feared. This is how the Sahaba were when they heard the nusus of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They was not haughty and thinking that we're better than the rest. Feared that the messenger may be talking about him. So then he said to the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَقُلْتُ مَنْ هُمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So then I said to the messenger, fearing, that fear in my heart, O messenger of Allah, who are these losers? Who are they? And then the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, الْأَكْثَرُونَ أَمْوَالًا إِلَّا مَنْ قَالَ حَاكَذَا وَحَاكَذَا وَحَاكَذَا رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِي the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they are the wealthy ones. They are the wealthy ones. Bima'na hakadha hakadha explains what it meant. Except for those that give. And he made an ishara to the right, to the front, and to the left, and to the back. Except for those, meaning those that Allah has blessed them with wealth, but they aid the others. They give in sadaqah, except for them. Other than that, they are the wrong ones. So what Allah has given us, whether it be plentiful, or whether it's medium or very little, we need to purify that wealth. We need to give according to our ability. Remember, wealth is a blessing, but wealth is also a belia, something that can be against you if you don't utilize it correctly. So I say on the end of that, an advice to myself, فَحْذَرْ فَحْذَرْ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ أَشَدَّ الْحَذَرْ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْخَاسِرِينَ Be aware, be aware. Ya Aba Adris, first and foremost, and then my brothers and my sisters, be aware from the traits of those who are losers. Be aware not to fall into the traits of those who are the losers. And remember the nasiyah of our Lord, and he has mentioned who are the losers. And he made istithna for a few. And it is a verse that we all know. It is a chapter that we have all memorized. Allah swore by time. And Allah Azawajal said, mankind are in a state of loss. Everyone. Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds. And a part of that belief and righteous deeds is that when ilm reaches us, when we learn something about what Allah has told us in the Quran, how we should be and what we should stay away from, a part of that belief is, is believing and then acting upon it and enjoining in good and inviting one another with patience. So I say, Allahumma ja'alna min al faizin wa la taj'alna min al khasirin. Allahumma ja'alna min al faizin wa la taj'alna min al khasirin. Allahumma ja'alna min al faizin. 
Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, make us from the successful ones. And do not make us from those who are the losers. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim aqimu salayar hamakumullah.